Hey everyone, this is Greg Tastic here, and today I'm going to show you how to set up your Xbox One wireless controller to work with RetroArch on a Mi Box. I'm assuming this would work on any Android TV device, though. And the only thing I want to say is this has to be the new Xbox One controller with Bluetooth. I don't believe that you could, uh, get the original controller without the Bluetooth to work wirelessly, although you could probably get it to work wired, but I don't have one to test, I only have the new controller. So right now, I'm actually navigating with the controller. I ran into a problem though, because the controller synced to, uh, to Android very easily, but then when I opened up RetroArch with the controller, nothing happened. And when I used the Mi Box controller that came with the device, RetroArch wouldn't recognize that either. It says it's not configured. I was able to connect my iBuffalo Super Nintendo controller to RetroArch and get it to detect it right away. But that's not ideal because not everyone may have one of those. But I do have something that everyone probably should have. And if you're watching a video like this or buying something like a Mi Box to play games with, I'm sure you have a keyboard. So what you could do to set up the Xbox One controller is you could just pair it with the uh, Mi Box. And then you still have that USB port open. So you're going to plug a keyboard into the USB port. Maybe you could use a wireless keyboard. I'm not sure if it will get recognized by... I'm using a wireless keyboard, but I pluck, plug the uh, receiver into the USB port. Could you like connect like one of those mini like Bluetooth keyboards and do it that way? I'm not sure. I don't have a Bluetooth keyboard like that to test it on. But I'm actually controlling the interface with the keyboard right now. It's a mouse and keyboard combo, so I could actually move the mouse too if I want. All that's built into Android. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to RetroArch. I'm going to hit enter to open it. And then once I'm in RetroArch, sorry that my interface is different. Yours may not look like this, but it's still the same menu and the same navigation. Once you're in RetroArch, you use your, the arrow keys on the keyboard to move around. And when you want to select something, X is going to be select and Z is going to be like the back button. So before I mess with the controller, there's one thing that I wanted to show you. Um, On-screen overlay, I turned this off because the first time I... It was defaulted to on, but the first time I uh, loaded up a, a game, there was like the touchscreen interface over it, even though I was using a controller. I haven't tested it out enough to definitely know that it will always do that. But I know it did it the one time. So I press X with my keyboard. I turn that off. That way, whoops, <laughs> the arrows also change it. Uh, but I'm going to hit Z to go back. And that way I know that that interface or that overlay, I should say, is not going to come up. Remember, this is an Android device. So like on a PC, if I go to, um, if I go to driver over here. And you see it says input driver, Android, joypad driver, Android. Like those are the only options you get, Android or no. So like on a PC, you get more options, I think like X input and all that. And that's not on here. So we're, we're dealing with what we got. But we're using our keyboard, that's fine. And we're going to go down to input, hit X. Um, another thing that you might want to do is I was having a problem with I didn't understand how to exit out of a ROM after I started it. What you could actually do is set this up some for some combination menu toggle gamepad combo. So once you unplug your keyboard, you're not going to be able to exit out of the ROM. But you could set up your controller to use any one of these combinations to exit, not exit out of the ROM, but to bring up the menu, which will then let you exit out. I chose start and select, but you could choose whichever one you want. Now what we're going to do is, even though the Xbox One controller is not configured, RetroArch does recognize it. So we're going to go to input user 1, which is what we want our controller to be. 
And I already have these settings set up, but I'll show you what it looks like. It, um, it's going to say retro pad. We want to change that to a uh, retro pad with analog where it says none here. You're going to want left analog and device index. I just left it blank as port zero. Um, before it was actually detecting as an Xbox One wireless controller, but I'm not sure if it stopped detecting because um, the controller is still on. And obviously, I still, you see, I have the configuration set up already. I think it stopped detecting it because I'm using a keyboard though. But all I'm going to want to do is uh, I'm going to click on user one, bind all, and I'm going to grab my controller. And I'm just going to bind all of these buttons. Select, I made back, start, obviously start, up, down, left, right, A, X. L is the bumpers, not the triggers. L2 is the, L2 and R2 are the triggers. Left, L3 and R3 are the thumb pads, pressing them. And then obviously, the, shit. I think I just... <laughs> reversed some of the uh, analog controls but that's okay now everything's set up and I put the keyboard down and I'm actually using the controller now to uh, control the menu instead of the keyboard and before you do that what you want to do is um, go to save current configuration and it will save it I'm not going to save it because I actually messed up the bindings when I was doing it. Another thing I wanted to warn you about is in Core, there's an option to... Uh, sorry, not Core. Where is it? Configuration. There's an option to configure uh, RetroArch per Core, which is helpful because every Core you might want a different controller scheme. The only thing that I'm going to warn you about that is, is that means you have to go into each Core and manually set up the controller again using the key board like the mouse and keyboard if you configure per core and you already configured it once like i just did and saved it but then you configure it per core for every core that you have you have to set up the controller it's not gonna automatically have that configured and just to show you i could go over here and i could load a game up and run it and i'm using my xbox one controller Everything is working. I don't have control over anything yet, but trust me, once I get control, you see, I could uh, attack with my B button, I could jump with my A button, I could pause it, whoop de doo Obviously, like I was telling you before, I could hold down on start and back at the same time, and it will give me <clears throat> some game options. And if I hit B from there, it will actually take me back to the main menu options where I could just quit out of RetroArch. Because it took me a while <laughs> to uh, figure that out. I was like trying to, uh, I was trying to like force close the RetroArch app constantly to get it to close. And then like the uh, app manager wasn't even recognizing that it was open, so I couldn't force close it. And I was like, what the hell am I doing wrong? And that's what it was. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it helps you in uh, getting your uh, Mi Box or any Android TV box that you use set up with RetroArch and an Xbox One controller. You know, it's actually like this is when I bought this box and like when I made sure that all my controllers were <laughs> updated to the Bluetooth Xbox One controllers. Like this is what I had in mind. Like you just set up this box you have it hooked up to a wireless controller and everything just works. It's not that often that everything just works like that for me and it took a lot of troubleshooting to get it like this, but now that I got it, I'm extremely happy. So hopefully this video helped you all out. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me in the comments. And I do ask you to check out my other videos. I do uh, Let's Plays. And as time goes on, I'm also gonna have more videos just you know trying to help uh, with stuff like this, you know, explaining how you could get, like, the most bang for your buck trying to, you know, emulate or even regular hardware, just, like, how you could set things up the best way. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.